Hi, this is Nadine with DIY Sweets. Today I'm going to show you how to make heart-shaped mini red velvet cakes. Now our red velvet cakes are going to be made in these pans. They're a little bit bigger than cupcakes, but they're still fairly small. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our pans and we need to spray it down really good with a flour-based spray. I also have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. The cake pans that I am using for this heart-shaped cakes, if I remember correctly, because I bought them several years ago, they were just Wilton brand heart-shaped cake pans. I'm sure they still sell them if that's what you want to get. But if you don't want to invest in heart-shaped mini cake pans like that, you could just cook your cake in a jelly roll pan and then get a heart-shaped cookie cutter and just cut out your hearts. That would work just about as easily as this if you don't want to invest in the pants. I'm now ready to start making the batter for this cake. I'm going to add to my bowl my shortening. my flour, my sugar, my baking soda and salt, my cocoa powder, my vanilla, my white vinegar, my red food coloring. Now the amounts you need of each of these are in the recipe that is on the blog site. So just go there if you're not there now and you'll be able to download this recipe. Now I'm going to turn my mixer on, and I want to turn on very low, as low as I can get it, so I can start mixing this all together. Okay, now that that's mixed in, I'm going to move this to the medium speed. And I'm going to let that go for one minute. This is now mixed for about one minute, so I'm just going to... Make sure this is all, looks like it's all mixed in really well. This is a very, very thick batter at this time because we really haven't added any of the liquid. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the eggs one at a time. And after we add each egg, we're going to let this beat for another minute. There's my first egg. Now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to let this beat for a minute. This has been going for about one minute. So I'm going to add my next egg. Continue adding the eggs until 
until all of them are added. And then I'll come back and show you what we do after that. This is now beat um, for a minute after adding all the eggs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lower my bowl. And I'm just going to scrape the bowl. Get all the stuff off the side. Try to get all the batter off of the beater. Then we're going to add the buttermilk. And we're not going to add the buttermilk all at once. We're going to add it in two additions. After each addition, after it's mixed, we're going to scrape down the bowl. So I have two cups of buttermilk, and so I want to put about a cup in. If I just turn this up to the high speed, or the medium speed that we want it to mix on, it's going to go flying everywhere. So I'm going to put this little dart on, and then I'm going to just start it out on the stir. Then I'm going to just mix it, turn it up, and I just want to mix it till I see it very well incorporated. That's now mixed in, so again, I want to scrape that bowl down, so I'm going to lower it and scrape down the bowl. You'll notice now this batter is looking a lot more like a cake batter. It's not as thick as it was, and we still have a little bit more liquid to add. But before it almost looked like a paste, and now it looks a lot more like a cake batter. We have now scraped it down, and we're going to add the last part of the milk. We then want to raise this up, and again, we're going to start this on a low speed to mix that milk in. As soon as we see that the milk is pretty much all the way mixed in, we'll speed it up to about medium, and we'll just keep beating it until it's mixed all the way in. And there we have our red velvet cake batter. Now what we want to do is, again, scrape it all down. I want to get as much of it off of that as I can because I'm ready to take this off. And I'm going to scrape more off. And remember, this is the time when I always just take a little bit off the beater and taste it to make sure it tastes right. And that one tastes really good. We are now ready to put the cake batter into the pans. Now, these pans are bigger than cupcake pans. This is the size scoop I use for cupcakes. Um, I'm guessing this is going to take two or three scoops because I want this pan to be at least halfway full. So I'm going to start with two. Mm, that's looking good. So probably two of these scoops is what I'm going to want for each of my cakes. One reason I like using scoops is it helps give pretty equal measurements when I'm measuring it out. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up both of my cake pans that I want to put in there to begin with, and then I will cook them. Cupcakes usually cook between 15 and 20 minutes. These are a little bit bigger than cupcakes, but I'm still going to want to check it at about 15 minutes because I don't want this to burn. So I'll be back with you after this is finished cooking. 
as I look in at these cakes, they are looking just about done. I'm going to just carefully open up my oven and I just want to stick a toothpick into one of the cakes. And as you see, when I pull it out, and I usually will do more than one to make sure, it is completely clean. These are ready to come out. So I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to put my last batch in and cook them. As you look at these, you can see how perfectly they formed. So these, these are going to cool for about 10 minutes and then after they're cool, I will be dumping them out. What I'm going to do after all of these have cooked and they are all completely cool is I'm going to put them in a container and seal the container up and I'm going to stick them in the fridge overnight because this recipe is a butter recipe. Well, it has shortening instead of butter, but it's still a recipe that as it sits in the fridge, it's going to become firmer and it's going to be easier to um, torque the, these little cakes. That means I'm going to cut them in half and it's going to be easier to clean up the ones where it overbaked. Tomorrow, we'll start finishing up these cakes. What we plan on doing with these cakes is we're going to cut them in half and we're going to put a cream cheese frosting filling in the middle and then we're going to make a ganache and pour it over the top and then we'll let that set up for a few minutes. After that set up, I'm going to pipe on a heart on the top. And then you have a fun and delicious dessert for Valentine's Day. Or for any romantic deal, meal that you are preparing. Our cakes are now cool and they've been in the refrigerator overnight. What we're ready to do now is to get the cakes ready to frost and decorate. Here is one of my cakes that actually overfilled the pan. The first thing I want to do is I want to take this and you can see that it's got the shape of the heart right there. So all I'm going to do to make this so it works is I'm just going to cut along that shape of the heart all the way through. And now that one is just as good as all the others. So if your cakes do overflow the pan, you can fix it that way. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same with those other few that overflowed the pan before I realized I had it too full. And then I'll be back with you. We have all of the cakes trimmed so that now that they look heart shaped, what we want to do now is we want to take this cake and we're going to cut it in half that way so that we can tort it. To do that, all you do is you get a knife that's got a serrated blade. And what I like to do is just start cutting and then keep turning the cake around. Because I find by doing that, I get a more level cut like this. Okay? So you're going to want to do that to all the cakes. Let me show you again what I do. I'm going to try to do it up in the air, see if it'll work so you can see. So I just stick my knife right in there and I just turn my cake around so it's never going all the way in. And then it stays, I find it stays more that same level. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of my cakes. Once I have them done, I'll show you how to make the frosting and pipe it in there and how to do the ganache. We have our bowl here ready to start making our frosting. So I am just going to put the half cup of uh, shortening in, eight ounces of cream cheese, and a half cup of butter, which would be one square of butter. I'm also going to add the salt to that. And it's a half a teaspoon. Now the butter is an unsalted butter. 
I want to then put this onto our stand mixer. Then I want to stick the beater on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up until it's all very well beat. Or creamed, I should say. And because I brought all of this to room temperature, really didn't take me that long. This recipe calls for two pounds of sugar. What I do to make it easier is I just buy two pound bags of sugar. That way I don't have to do any measuring because it's already been weighed out. Now I'm going to put all of this into there. And once I have that all in there, I'm going to just spread that around. Powdered sugar can make a very big mess. So I like to cover this to help minimize the amount of blowout. I'm also going to start mixing on the lowest speed I can while this is still down low. I'm just going to mix it. So I have this so low it's actually below one. And then I'm going to bring this up. Still keeping it on the lowest speed I can, the stir, and I want to beat this in. You'll notice even at this low speed, there's a little bit of powdered sugar dust that we're getting. I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla. And that's a tablespoon. That adds a little bit of liquid to this. Now you'll see it is starting to mix in. I can now turn the speed up to medium and just mix it. This is really thick frosting. It's, it's thick enough you can pipe and do decorations. I am planning on piping with it, but it may be still a little bit thicker than I want. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just check this. I don't need that anymore because all the powder's in. I'm going to scrape it all down and see just how thick it is. And that's feeling like it's not too thick. It's feeling like it's probably going to be able to pipe. I'm going to scrape that all down. I'm going to lift this back up. And just another couple of half a minute or so, get that mixed up so it's nice and creamy. Some people will tell you to always sift the powdered sugar when making buttercream. I haven't really found that it's that necessary. It seems to work just fine like this, so I don't. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to. We're ready to put the frosting into a decorator bag. So I use a cup, just one of those cheap cups you can get at 7-Eleven or any of those convenience stores, to put my bag in. Now I'm using an open tip, but it's got some scallops there because I want it to have a little bit of a design since you're going to be able to see this. And then I just put this into the cup and then fold it down around the edges of the cup. That makes it so that I can fill the cup with just one hand. I'm just going to put some of my frosting into this cup. Because you know, red velvet cake, I feel like it just needs that cream cheese. That is what really makes red velvet cake really good. So I'm going to stop right there. Because I don't like my bag more than about halfway full. So by the time I push that down, it's probably going to be halfway full or more. So now I just push that frosting down. And once I can twist the bag, I twist the bag. And I want to squeeze into this bowl until it's coming out. 
I now have my heart on the turntable. So with the one hand, I'm just going to go around like this and pipe. my heart. Then I'm just going to go on the inside and fill it up like that. Once I have a pipe, I'm just going to stick my cake and I do want to press a little bit, not hard because I don't want it oozing out, but I want to press enough to get it to stick and you'll see, you're going to see this when it's done because when we pour the ganache on it, it's not going to cover all that up. Then I'm just going to put them all on a rack like this. I want them on a rack like this because I'm going to use this rack on a jelly pan to put the ganache on so that um, it, the jelly pan can catch all the ganache that drips off. Let me show you one more time how I did this. So I just open up the cake and I just do a quick going around the outside of the cake and I like to make sure it's on the outside edge and then just go in and fill it and it's as simple as that push down move it over to here I'm gonna continue doing this until I have them all done I actually have 30 little cakes. My batter made 30 cakes. So when I get all 30 done, I will come back and we'll show you how to do the ganache and pour it on. We're ready now to make the ganache. So I have measured out into this bowl nine ounces of bittersweet chocolate. I have in this cup eight ounces of heavy cream. I'm now going to take my cream and I'm going to stick it in the microwave and I want to bring it to a boil. I want it to just barely get to the boil. So I'm going to do it for one minute and then I'm going to check it. At that point I'll see if it's starting to form bubbles. If so, it's only going to go about 15-30 seconds. If it still only feels lukewarm, I will do it for another minute. So I'll be back with you when this comes to a boil and I'll let you know just how long it took. This is just starting to boil. I was watching it very closely because I don't want it to boil over. If you look carefully you might see some bubbling but I just brought it to boil so it didn't boil that hard. Now I am pouring this heavy cream onto the chocolate and then I'm going to let this sit for one minute. So I'll be back in a minute to show you what we do. This has now been sitting for one minute. I'm just going to take my spoon and I'm going to stir it. And you're going to watch it go from a very milky look starting to turn brown to a bright and glossy chocolate ganache. You just have to keep stirring it because see, as you look at it, it doesn't really look all that great right now. You see all these lumps and chunks, but you'll magically see it just turn into a gorgeous ganache. So you just have to be patient and know what's gonna happen and keep stirring. You'll notice now that we're starting to get a lot more brown and a lot less milk. Still not that color we want, so we are still stirring it. You'll notice now it's getting darker and richer. Almost looks like the ganache. So we're just going to keep stirring And there you can see just in that length of time how it goes from that milky, lumpy mess to a nice, smooth ganache. 
Now when you make a ganache, it doesn't really matter so much uh, what kind of chocolate you use. You notice I use the little melties. What it does matter is that it has enough of the cocoa butter in it. Um, this one had 64, and that's a pretty good, you could get away with 54, but you don't really want much less than 54. And this one had 64. So as you see, that is very, very creamy, and it's very runny. Um, it's also, when I touch it, it's not that hot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I put this on the cake. I have my cooling rack inside a jelly roll pan or a half sheet pan. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my ganache, it's in this bowl, and I'm going to spoon it over the cake. And I kind of want to spread it so that I make sure it gets all across the top. And then it can drip down the sides. So I just continue making sure it covers the whole top and then it drips down the sides. And if when you're looking at it, you don't see enough dripping down the sides, just add a little bit more to the edges and it'll drip down the sides. Our goal isn't to totally cover the cake because we want to be able to see that red velvet because this is Valentine's and we want that red showing through. Our goal though is to cover the top of the cake. So I'll be back with you as soon as I have all 30 of my cakes covered and we'll show you how we put the little heart on. Now the one thing I am going to do is I want this to set up just a little bit because I don't want this still running. So I will probably put this in the fridge to give it about 10 minutes or so to set up. In fact this whole dessert would probably be good when you're not eating it to store in the fridge and then about an hour or two before you're ready to serve it, pull it out and bring it to room temperature because the cake is going to taste better at room temperature. But that way you're guaranteed that the ganache will stay pretty solid. I'm looking at this as I'm spreading it on and I'm thinking I probably am going to need to do another batch of ganache. So if you want to save yourself time, if you're following this recipe, you're probably going to want to, instead of doing nine ounces of chocolate and one cup of cream cheese, you're probably going to want to do two cups of Instead of doing one cup of the heavy cream and nine ounces of the bittersweet chocolate, you're probably going to want to do the two cups of heavy cream and 18 ounces of the bittersweet chocolate so that you will have enough to cover all of your cakes. Because this amount looks like it's only going to be enough for about half. We're going to add a little heart to the top of our cake. So I have a much smaller tip right here, and it's a smooth round one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this red, because I dyed my buttercream red, into the bag. Now this is a little bit soft because to get the buttercream to be red, you have to add enough that it then becomes a little bit soft, but it should still be okay. 
So I'm going to bring my cake pan over here. And I'm just going to add my heart. That one is not as centered as I'd like it. So I'm going to try to get a little bit more centered. So I do dot, bring down, dot, bring down. And you can practice with these. You could make them bigger. You could make them smaller. And you notice, you could even make the puffy part at the top bigger and then smaller there. So I'm just going to continue doing this to all of my cakes, and then I will have my cakes. So you go ahead and do that to yours, and you could also sprinkle sugar on this if you wanted. It's up to you. Go ahead and finish your cakes now. I have my cake all done. Presented on a plate like this, it's ready for that fanciest or most romantic dinner you you want to have. Keep this in the fridge till about an hour or so before you serve it, and then bring it out just enough to bring it to room temperature. This is Nadine with DIY Sweets and our red velvet heart-shaped cake. Enjoy and happy baking. <music>